catch yourself saying this, man, I wish I could get my eyes to look like hers, or man, I wish I could get my foundation to look as good as hers. I catch myself saying that all the time on different things. Well, today I am helping each of you boost your makeup confidence so that you can feel confident in the skin you're in and that you can boost your makeup game just a little bit to be able to get any look you want to. And we're gonna create this look. Hello, my friends. I am so happy to be bringing you this video today. I think that this is a really important subject. Number one, because I think that we look at Instagram, Facebook, even YouTube, and we think I can never get myself to look like them. Well, that's true, partly because we're all so different and we all have our our pluses and our minuses, don't we? Different parts on our face that are really, we feel like we've got those, we've got it down, our makeup looks great there, but there might be parts that we feel like I don't know how to do that or I don't really feel comfortable doing that. So I'm going to give you five different tips today that really have helped me up my makeup game. And I am all of a sudden getting so many different comments from people on, have you had a facelift? Have you done some work? Have you had your eyebrows done? First of all, I am such an open book that you guys know that I can't keep a secret for nothing. So if I get anything done, you guys are gonna be the first ones to know. I haven't had anything done yet. I'm really considering getting my 11s done, but nothing else because I really can't afford it. Other than that, I really, I really haven't had anything going on, but I have changed a few application techniques and my makeup does feel a little bit different when I'm done with it than it did maybe say 18 months ago, two years ago. So I'm going to bring those five tips to you that I feel like have really changed everything for me and that they really have contributed to me being more confident with my makeup. You might have others. I, these might not be things that you want to do, but what I want to say is put these five tips together and it might really help you to pull your makeup look together and boost your makeup confidence. Okay, I've talked enough. Now let's get into the tutorial so you can see what five things. There's probably quite a few more tips in this, but there's five basic things that I have been doing over this past year to 18 months that really have helped me up my makeup game and I hope they help up yours too. Let's get into this. In order to build your makeup confidence and be comfortable with the makeup that you wear, you need good techniques and that is a lot of what's going to be talked about in this video. I'm going to demonstrate actually five different things that I feel like has boosted my makeup confidence through the years and things that I have done completely complete videos on. So we're not going to spend a lot of time doing each step here, but I, on most of these, I do have a corresponding video that you can go to that will help you to know how to do these in a more step-by-step -step manner. So I'm taking primer. I'm not going to specifically say what each product is because if I did, it would take me forever. But the first tip is the foundation routine that I showed where you reverse the order of your powder and and your foundation. Now I learned this from Wayne Goss. This is a color corrector, by the way. Learned this from Wayne Goss. It has been a lifesaver to me and I know to so many of you as well because you have said that you really enjoy it. It helps keep your makeup on longer. And yes, that video just kind of changed everything for me. I do my foundation like this every single time. I don't do it any differently anymore. It is just the gold standard for me. So if you're interested, that video will be up in a card and then it will be linked below as well. Now next after primer and I do my color corrector, I go in with powder. I'm using this lavender powder. This is a powder that I mentioned in my last video and you are all very interested in this. And well, it just brightens up. It makes a very bright look on your face and you can use it to set your under eyes or whatever you need to. What I forgot was my eyeshadow primer. I use Anastasia Beverly Hills. No surprise to any of you. But what I want to do is completely cancel out all this darkness so it doesn't look dark around my eyes at all. And then I'm going to take whatever's left over on that powder brush and I'm just going to set my eyes real quick with that. 
Now I'm taking a BB cream this time and I got this off of Amazon. It's a little bit too orange for me and too dark for me. So we're going to lighten it a little bit and we're going to color correct. And I do have a video on that as well. Although that is not a part of the steps here. We're just going to do a little mixing to get my correct one. So I put a drop of blue and a drop of white in there and that will not only correct the color tone of it and bring it more cool, but it'll bring it a little bit lighter for me. And, that and you can apply your foundation with whatever, whatever you want, but this really has helped me really enjoy my foundation again. I was getting my foundation to look modeled and it was just where it was not my favorite thing. As soon as I discovered this tip, it just changed everything for me. And all of a sudden I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. Why haven't I done this trick forever? The secret to pretty foundation, pretty um, eyeshadow, pretty blush, anything on your face is really blending. And so I really want to stress that take some time and you know really take care of your canvas it's the boring part of our makeup when we have to do our foundation but for me if i take a little bit of extra time with my foundation then everything else is going to look better and i actually learned this again from wayne he was talking about just really spending a lot of time in blending and pushing that product in so that it's not sitting on the top of your skin but it's really just melds and becomes one with your skin. Now we're going to segue into point number two, and that is that I no longer use concealer on my under eyes. You did see me use a corrector before I did that powder. Now I'm going to just use my foundation. I'm going to use what's left on my hand, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to cover these dark babies with just foundation. When I found this out, I was just floored, and um, most of you were like, I've been doing that for years. I couldn't handle concealer. Well, concealer really is thick and it makes that area ex be accentuated, which is not an area that we want accentuated when we're older because we have crepey wrinkles in there. We have dark circles anyway, and we just want it brightened up. This particular BB cream that I'm using, I think it's called Maison or something like that. Everything will be listed and linked below as well. But this does a beautiful job of covering all of that darkness with the same cream or the same foundation that you used on your face. And because it's the same color, it doesn't look like you've got these raccoon eyes or anything like that. I love that about it. White eyes, like you've been wearing a visor skiing and then you take it off and you sunburned out here, but this is all white. We're nothing like that. This is just the same exact color. It looks so pretty, so bright, and I love it. I absolutely love it. One thing I do at this point, and I want you to think about this because this can be a game changer as well, and this isn't one of the points that I was going to put in here, but turn your br uh, blending sponge around to where you don't have any product on it and just go over everything. When you do that, you're picking up excess, the parts that might be inclined to break apart on you or get patchy and so what happens is you are picking up a little bit you're not picking up a ton but you're picking up a little bit and it really helps the lasting power of that makeup most of us because it's summer we need to set our under eyes with something i've been doing it with the becca um, light shifter but this is the elf that i just talked about in a dupe video and it is pretty darn close so i want you to be sparing with this though if you get too much powder under your eyes and some people don't like powder at all i get that some people are of the opinion that women of a certain age should never ever wear powder. I understand that. But for me and the way that it's hot, I mean, it's 104 degrees and it is warm when you go outside. And if I don't set that, it's going to get really sweaty underneath there. There's going to be lines. It's going to really, really just impact the way that that looks. So I have to set it just a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. All right. Tip number three, that's going to boost your makeup confidence is do not be afraid of bronzing. And that is because when you bronze your face, your face comes to life, not only with blush, but especially with bronzing. And what you really want to do is to stay out here in the peripheral periphery of your, the outside of your face.
base. I'm using ColourPop bronzer today. It isn't really a cool one. It isn't really a warm one. It's just kind of sits in the medium part there. And I'm just going to start up here in my hairline because I have a really high forehead. I'm starting up here in my hairline. I'm going to bring that around and this fan brush will be linked below. I always have people ask about the brushes. I try to list as many as I can remember. And then I want you to use that to contour a little bit. Don't be afraid to get it up into the blush area. You're using it to carve out your cheekbones just a little bit. Run it over your chin, run it over your nose to bring all of that color together. You can go out here on the outside by your hairline. And then remember you can do by your ears too with what's left over. And then what I do is I go right here under my chin. You guys have seen me do this a million times to disguise a double chin. That bronzer will really seriously give your face some life. If you're very pale, you can look a little bit sickly at times. And if you have kind of a complexion where it's not very bright the same thing so can you see how the the face is really coming to life really quickly this is a bonus tip this isn't a part of the one two three and four this is a bonus tip I've been talking about this forever I just take my highlighter and I put my highlighter on underneath my blush I've been doing that for a long time because I feel like what it does is give you a very lip from within look instead of a beaming highlight I'll show you how that works right now and I'm just taking my brush and I'm going to pounce that, bounce that on the cheeks and brighten up the cheek area. But you can tell almost immediately from what I'm doing is that that color, that really pretty sheen, it just so, shows through so nicely through the blush. So you still have a flush of color. You still look like you really have that flushed look after you get embarrassed or whatever, but it shows through and it shows that really pretty highlight. I love that. I'm going to do an extremely simple eye today because I have done a whole entire video all about eyes, aging eyes, and I went completely through it. This is from Benefit. It is a little bit more, if any of you know of a really nice pink, super light pink, I'll show you right here. It's super light pink, almost to the point of being white. I can substitute for this at the drugstore. I am completely open to knowing about that. And this is point number four, is that there are things that you need to specifically pay attention to as you're doing your eyes. First of all, the arch. I just draw a line with that pencil and I lift that arch instantly and I blend that in. That opens up your eye, makes it look lifted and you look wide awake. Inside right here on the inner corner, you can do this with eyeshadow as well. Right now I'm just using this because it's very handy. And then make sure that you just go across the lid just a little bit and blend it in like crazy. The reason is a dark lid is going to make your eye look smaller. You're going to look, it's going to be like a sultry look, which is beautiful too, but this is a look that's going to completely awaken that whole entire eye. Now you don't want that to be so stark that you look like, again, you got those raccoon eyes. So just make that you make sure that you kind of just blend that in a little bit. What happens with that in this hot weather, again, is you can get creasing. So I'm going to take just a white color right here. It's not white. It's more like a beige color right there. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to set everything that I just did. Whew, I got that inside corner a little bit too bright. That's okay. We will blend it out with that same palette and the same brush that I just used to blend all the white color on. I'm just going to kind of, you know, tap it off on my hand. If you have a rag, I do have one in my lap, but I'm not going to do that right now. Very, very simple. I'm just going to shade the eyes. This isn't part of the tip either. I'm just going to give a little bit of shading to these eyes right here on that outer corner. And then I'm going to take that color and I'm just going to blend it. So there's not going to be any other colors here. There's just going to be the two colors, one from the eyelid color and then this one from the shading color. Super simplistic eye look, on the go, everyday look. This is still part of tip number four. What I want you to do is go in with that same brush. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pinch that brush because maybe we don't have a lot of time to grab every single brush we have and I'm going to contour my eyes. I know that that sounds so weird. Just make sure you tip off, tap off, tip off. Make sure you tap off the tip of that brush 
pinch it so that it's kind of flat a little bit and then I want you to go in and I want you to shade underneath your eye just ever so slightly. This is contouring the eye and what is this is going to do is it's going to open up the eye and it's going to look so much bigger. I know a lot of people don't even like to wear liner on the bottom, but this is a great substitute because we're pulling that eye open and then just blend it with that corner. For me, it just makes a world of difference. Because I didn't work with any tape, I will take my sponge and I will go right out there at that corner where a lot of darkness gets and just take care of it and really pull it out. All right, now I'm gonna go back in with that Can Make Powder and I'm gonna set my forehead and my cheeks a little bit through my T-zone and you'll be able to see that there's really not any shine in this. It's just a lot of light here. And I'm doing this, one, to show you this purple powder because that's so many of you ask, and two, because you do need that T-zone set down if you're like me in the summer where you sweat through hot flashes or it just gets 104 degrees and you have to have something on there for your makeup not to break apart. So the shadow under the eyes was the one that I didn't talk about in any video before. Number five is a video that I did very recently and that is contouring your lips to make your lips look bigger. And as you can see right now, mine look non-existent. My lips don't have a lot of color to them and they're pretty thin. So I'm gonna take that color that I just barely used on my eyes to contour underneath my eyes and I'm taking a pencil brush from Sigma and I'm dipping that in there quite lightly and I'm going to contour. I am not going to do the whole entire, entire tutorial once again because I have that whole video up and I will make sure that it's linked and um, hopefully listed up in a card right here. So let's just do this contouring and see what a difference this can make in my lips. Okay, as you can see, it looks weird right now, but I am using a Rimmel lipstick. And of course, dang it, I can't find my glasses, so it will get thrown up on the screen what it is. I'm using the tip of it to really outline my lips because I'm not gonna use a liner today. I wanna just go in and kind of get really close to that contour. Okay, they look pretty good already. I'm just taking a gloss from MAC and I'm gonna put it in the center and that pout is gonna be done. And now that pout looks bigger. So we went through five different tips. I hope that they did help you. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me. I'm gonna pop my earrings on and you guys always ask every time about my earrings and you ask about my shirt. My shirts I buy at Ross or on Amazon and I'm happy to say that this time I can show you my shirt. Let me just pan down just a tiny bit so you can see. It's an off the shoulder with the spaghetti straps. I think it's great. I will push that camera back up just a little bit. And then my earrings as always are custom made by another YouTuber, My Life Wendy. D. You can catch her on Instagram and send her a note if you'd like to. She does great earrings and I absolutely love everything she's ever sent to me. This is the final look. Those are the five steps. I hope that they do help to boost your makeup confidence. And I do hope that no matter what age you are, you realize that makeup is optional. All these extra steps bring me joy. This is my hobby. This is my job. It is my happy place. And so it's something that I really enjoy doing and bringing to you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope that you're having a great day and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye, my friends.